Hi everyone and welcome to today's session. Today we're going to be talking about how to more readily and easily complete your APA reference and citation worksheet due in week four. Okay, so this week um, takes us one step closer to creating that essay with research. In fact, this week is all about locating research and, and being able to incorporate that research into our essay. Remember uh, that our ultimate goal when we write our essay is to be able to cite some basic research that we found that supports our argument and cite it using APA formatting. And in order to do that, we need to understand um, APA formatting. And we have some great tools here in our Center for Writing Excellence that can help us do that. Remember that APA formatting um, includes um, in-text citations and reference citations. Basically, what the difference between a reference citation and an in-text citation is, is a reference citation is the citation that goes at the end of your essay in your references section. That citation will include all of the bibliographic information about your research. Okay, So it will include the author's last name, uh, first name initial, the year of publication, the date, the title of the article, and any other bibliographic information. Now the in-text citation is a bit more condensed. And let's take a, for example, let's take a peek at this bit of information that this author has used to support her overall claim. She has chosen to use one direct quote in this paragraph, and it's less than 40 words, so keep that in mind. You'll want to choose a, a direct quote that is less than 40 words. And um, she has included that direct quote in quotation marks. And then she's included an in-text citation after it, and the in-text citation for a direct quote will include the author's last name, the year, in which the information was published, and the page or paragraph number. In this case, the, because the information came from a digital text without pagination, we included the paragraph number. So para.7 is what it would indicate. Otherwise, if it was a page number, it would be page.7. Okay, so uh, alrighty. So that's, that's what an in-text citation looks like for a direct quote. What does an in-text citation for a summary look like? It might look like something like this. Okay, here you can see some factual information that the author took from an outside source. She put it all into her own words, and then she included the author's last uh, author's last name. In this case, it wasn't uh, there wasn't an author; it was actual company or an organization behind the information. So the organization name was listed, and the the year in which the information was published was listed as well in that in-text citation. So as you can see, an in-text citation for summarized information is a little bit different than in an in-text citation for a direct quote. All right, so this is where we're going. Now, today's assignment is going to help us get there. So for today's assignment, you're going to locate two credible resources within our library. So in order to model this process, I have located a good resource for us to use. and. In this case, I'm writing an essay on the benefits of online learning. All right, so I'm going to then use the reference and citation generator located within our Center for Writing Excellence to help me do that. In order to get the generator going, you'll just go ahead and click on the tool here, reference and citation generator tool. All right, so once I've done that, I have my generator page open. Okay, and then uh, I will then click generator because I want it to help me generate information. Because I know I have found a good resource, a good credible source of information that comes from a journal or magazine article, I will select that option. Then as you can see, the reference and citation generator asked me to list some information. My uh, information here indicates that the author's name is Dana Thompson, and um, uh, so we'll start there. The author's last name is Thompson. Author's first and middle name is, starts with a D, Dana. So I type in D. And then I don't have multiple authors in this case. My year of publication was. My year of publication was. Uh, sorry, 2011 summer. All right, 2011 summer. I type in 2011 and the season was summer. The title of the article was 
conversations with teachers on the benefits and challenges of online learning for gifted students. So in this case, I, because I don't want to write it all down and then have to rewrite it, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I select it all and then I hit control C. And when I move back to the generator, I put my cursor in the place where it belongs and I can hit control V. All right, click out of it. Uh, title of journal magazine. The title of my magazine journal article was Gifted Child Today. All right, let's slip back here. Gifted Child Today. All right, my volume number was 34 and my number was three. All right, so I slip back there. 34 and my number was three. Okay, I'm doing pretty good here. My the page range of my article that's indicated right here, 31 through 39. All right, 31 through 39. All right, now in this case, it is asking that it is then asking me for a page number of a quote I might use. So in order to find a quote, um, I would want to go to the PDF article because it, I know it has pagination. It was taken from an article. So I go to the PDF version of that source right here. Okay, and I let it load. All right, and then I'm going to look for a direct quote or a bit of summarize, a bit of information that I might want to summarize. Okay, so well, here's one. It looks pretty good information. It says all of the teachers interviewed and 92% of the participants also participants also remarked on how. In an online learning environment, through the use of one-on-one -on -one email correspondence, it was easier to address the individual needs of each student. Okay, that's good information uh, because it really would support my idea that online learning has many really good benefits, like better individualization of of learning. Hey, that's a good that's a good bit of information. So, um, I I scroll down here and I see that that quote is direct uh, that direct quote is located on page thirty three. So then I can pop back out to my reference and citation generator and I can put 33 in there. All right, looks like all of my information is loaded. Let's see what happens when I generate a citation. Oh, awesome. Okay, look, at, I think this did a very good job. So I will take my, uh, as you can see, it, it, it generated my reference page entry. So I, I'm so happy with that. So I select it and then I hit Control C again pop back out to my worksheet and I go to my your turn section because I see I have to do this twice. Here's my reference ge generator. Here's my reference citation section. So I can pop that in there. Okay. And notice it, it, it lost the spacing there between these two words. So make sure that if it runs any, you know, uh, words together, you put a space in there. <laughs> Obviously technology is not perfect. It's pretty good though. <laughs> I like how this generated that for me. All right, now I want to paste the examples provided by the generator to show possible in-text citations for this reference. Okay, so um, here we go. Go back out to my generator, and here are the in-text citation examples. All right, now I go back to my worksheet. I'm going to paste those in here. Okay, now, um, and, oops, I don't need that. Okay, now I need to go and fully include this information because this assignment is really setting me up to be able to use these summaries and use this uh, direct quotes in uh, my paper. So let's say, where was that direct quote? I go back to that article and I really liked this one, this direct quote about the 92% of participants indicating that this was a, a great, that, e that um, online learning had many benefits. So according to Thompson, that's the author of my my uh, article. Do, do, do. She said this. Oh, and you have to love technology auto format, right? So we need to get rid of that auto formatting that automatically populated there. And that's okay. It won't take us very long to do, but we don't want all the funky numbers in there. So I want to get rid of those. I remember control C will copy information, control V will paste information that's been highlighted. All right, so there is my direct quote. Woo, done with that guy. Now make sure that 
the punctuation is not needed. The period will go at the end of the uh, direct quote on the outside of the page, okay? So the period does not go inside of the quotation marks. It goes on outside of the page number. All right, this all looks good. I am happy with that. That looks good. Now I, I look up here and I have to create two paraphrases. Okay, so I take this information and I need to paraphrase it into my own words. So I take that direct quote and maybe I might say something like uh, research indicates that 92% of participa participants in one study remarked on the fact that they received enhanced individualized instruction due to the nature of email communication. All right, so I've summarized that information. All right, that 92 participants, in, well, and all instructors. Well, okay, but I, I'll just, I guess I'll just note that the, the participants in, received it. So um, research indicates that 92% of participants in one study remarked on the fact that they received enhanced individualized instruction due to the nature of email communication. Okay, I'm happy with that one. Looking good. All right, here. Um, so as you can see, after I have summarized information, it's all in my no own words. It, it doesn't reflect any of the, um, you know, I haven't copied and pasted these words up here. I've, I've put it into my own words, but the same information. And here, so then after I have introduced it, um, I, I would need to cite it because it's not my, it's not my factual information. So I cite it with the author's last name and the year. All right, so in here is a different style of inserting a par bit of paraphrased information. So I might write a Thompson indicate Thompson 2011. Uh, determined that um, in a research study determined yes that 92 percent in that 92 percent of participants I didn't mean study there this should say study I apologize for that typo <laughs> um, in a research study determined that 92 percent of participants in one study remarked on the fact that they received enhanced individualized instruction due to the nature of the email communication. All right, so you just have to, you can see how this one, it, this shows how the in-text citation follows it. It's, um, it would be called a integrated in-text citation. It's all integrated into one parenthetical citation. Here it's um, separated. The parent, the author's name is a little, is separated outside of the pepper parenthetical citation. So it's just, um, noted a little bit different in stylistically, but they both get the job done. So here you have two styles of summaries and here you have your direct quote. So now when it comes to writing your paper, you know you can return to this worksheet and you can say, all right, I know I need to include one-sided summary and one-sided direct quote in my paper. I like this summary the best. I'm going to use this and this is going to go in that paragraph. Okay. So down here, when you complete this assignment, you'll want to think of a different think of research that you can use in another body paragraph. Okay, I would I would use one piece of of research in one paragraph and another piece of research in a different paragraph. Okay, so find a different resource that supports a different claim you're making in your other body in another body paragraph, and you'll do the same process. So and then you'll take if you chose the summary to include from this information into your paper, then you would include the direct quote because you need one sided summary and one direct quote in your essay at least. So anyway, I hope this helped and I hope you have a great day out there and take care. Let us know if you have questions. Bye-bye.